Good evening to you, precious one. Welcome once again to our weekly broadcast, Monday Night Live, once again. And here um, you have uh, Victor Bolanta. I'm glad to come to your space. Thank you for the opportunity to bring you this word of life tonight or this afternoon, wherever it is you're in the world. I'm sure you've had an amazing day. Um, we'll continue our series uh, on manifestations of the Spirit. And before we continue, let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, once again, we thank you. Right now, we surrender to the Lordship of your Spirit. So We ask that you speak to our hearts. Let these words, let it stir us up from within. Open the eyes of our understanding, Heavenly Father. Let your name be praised, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So last week, I touched on a few symbols um, that we find throughout scriptures that speak about the person of the Holy Spirit. These symbols, like I said before, are metaphors. They are not the Holy Spirit, but they are representations of certain attributes of the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the symbols I failed to touch on is, um, I remember I spoke about um, the dove at Jesus' baptism, the way the dove descended, that was a description. I remember I spoke about um, the wind, I remember I spoke about fire, I remember I spoke about wine, I remember I spoke about water. I also remember I spoke about the glory or the cloud. One of the one of one of the very important symbols I missed out on was the oil. Um the oil which we find a lot in the old testament um you know as a as a symbol or representation of the spirit of god the oil was predominantly used to anoint people into offices especially the office of the king um to anoint them to appoint them or to impart onto them the spirit of god to function in that particular role so we find that a lot that word anoint um simply means to to smear you know to smear something so basically when you apply something on your body you are basically anointing yourself all right so to smear that's what it basically means um you read your bible in acts chapter 10 verse 38 the bible there says that how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so that word again i remember i said it means to smear so that was why oil was used predominantly in the old testament you know because of the attributes of oil the way it flows you know, it flows just the way the Holy Spirit moves upon us like that, you know. So, <clears throat> we had that as a symbol in the Old Testament, and we de- now we have the substance in the New Testament. So, we often refer to that as the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It says, God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost. He anointed him, he smeared upon him, you know, with the power of the Holy Ghost, basically. So, um, you know, that operation of the Spirit was also there, you know, for healing. Oil is also a healing material, you know. Um... The Bible talks about how that, you know, when the Good Samaritan encountered that man, you know, that was injured on the road, he, he anointed him, you know, so oil was a healing material. And more importantly, oil was also um, important, you know, was also fuel for the lamb, for their lamps that they used. That was what they used to fuel their lamp. Basically, it's still oil, it's still crude oil we use today, basically petrol, kerosene, whatever it is you use, it's oil. So it's important for the engine. Now you know that the engine is the heart of every machine, basically. So the Holy Spirit on the inside of us is, you know, the engine is always inside. So that's the same with the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us and moves from within us. So, you know, so you understand that symbolism now of oil and how important it is for the functioning of a lot of things. It's the same work that the Holy Spirit does from in and within us. If you have not watched that video, just head on to the video. I talked about a lot of things that will bless you. This week, I want to touch very quickly on the indwelling of the Spirit. The indwelling of the Spirit. Of course, you know, the word is literal. The indwelling of the Spirit. So, something that dwells within, basically. Um, I want to start from a reading in Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 26 to 27. Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 26 to 27. The Bible there says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, 
and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them so this was the prophet ezekiel prophesied by the inspiration of the, of the holy spirit the inspiration of god talking about the promise of the father which was his desire from the beginning of time you see i've said time and again that you see the concept of god's kingdom is the king and his dominion the father and his family and you see the hallmark <clears throat> The hallmark of redemption is the indwelling of the Spirit. That is the reason why Jesus Christ came, to live in us as mortal men. You know, I, I gave the analogy um, two, two episodes ago. I spoke about, you know, the Holy Spirit, another comforter, Allos Paracletos, which means another of Christ or another of the same kind, basically. So, basically, the whole, Jesus Christ had to go to mass produce himself as the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. Amen. All right, so... I said that the indwelling of the spirit is the all mark of redemption so god's ultimate plan is to live in mortal men and he does that by the framework of redemption you see that now he says so you know because we have a lot of questions around what is the indwelling of the spirit what is the infilling of the spirit what is the baptism of the holy spirit we're going to try as much as possible to address all of that all throughout this series um, but the focus now is the indwelling of the spirit so the question now is when does a man receive the holy spirit that's the question most people tend to ask because some believers you know they believe um that if you don't for example you don't speak in other tongues you don't have the holy spirit some believe that because they don't speak in other tongues they don't have the holy spirit there's a lot of misconceptions sometimes around some of these intricacies and some for some other folks believe that well you know you're born again you have the holy spirit but then speaking in tongues is not for this age it's for the apostolic age Many, many things that we need to really investigate from, you know, from God's word and find out what the truth is. The truth is that when a man is born again, he has the spirit because <laughs> the blood is the doorway to the spirit. You see what I'm talking about? The blood is the doorway to the spirit. We have the example I read for, for you from Acts chapter 2 from verse 4 last week. I spoke about the, the apostles' experience, you know, when the Holy Spirit came upon them in Acts 2, 4, it says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, but that was not when they received the Holy Spirit because they were already born again in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. So Jesus Christ had instructed them in John 20 and Luke 24 that they were to tarry in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. But that was after he said to them in John chapter 20, verse 22. It's a very important scripture, you need to read it. John 20, 22, he says, And when he said this, the Bible says, He breathed upon them and said unto them, receive ye the holy ghost he breathed upon them and said unto them receive you the holy ghost now again mind you it's very important for you to understand the context of scriptures and study between the lines that word breathe is not literal okay so he was not breathing on them physically that word breathe is a figure of speech john uses a lot of figurative um, metaphors in his writing he uses a lot of figure of speech so many of those things that you talk about when we talk about the water you know, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water, and many of those things we find those analysis in John's writings. Okay, so look, 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 look does a bit more justice in his explanation in Luke chapter 24, verse from verse 44. It's the same scenario. It says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. The Bible then says, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. It says, and repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among the nations beginning at Jerusalem. So the similarity in the experience from, that we see in John is the same thing in Luke chapter 24. He breathed on them simply means he opened their understanding. There's not, there's not enough time for me to read all through, all through the scriptures. Read the entire John chapter 20. You understand what I'm talking about. When Jesus appeared to them and, you know, he spoke to them and said, you know, peace be unto you, my peace I give to you and all of that. He was declaring, you know, what he was declaring to them basically was the gospel. What he was declaring to them basically was what he had accomplished, you know. And then by the time he had finished, the Bible says he opened their understanding. So they understood the gospel. So breathing upon them, there was the new birth for them. So they became born again at that instant. So the moment they became born again, 
they received the spirit so every man that is born again has the fullness of god's spirit on the inside of them has the fullness of god's spirit on the inside of them. matter of fact when a man is born again he has the fullness of the holy ghost on the inside of him with all the components of the spirit so as you develop and as you grow in your faith work you begin to pull out or you make manifest those things that the holy ghost has on the inside of you for example first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 the scripture there says that the manifestation of the spirit is given to all men now not every single human being but every man that is saved to profit with so that word giving is the greek word didomi which simply means a full disclosure the holy spirit was not given in half measure at the new birth the holy spirit was fully given that was why jesus christ died is that ezekiel prophesied it he says i will put my spirit within you not in half measure that you'll be able to walk in my statutes and keep my judgments because the spirit is god's enablement on the inside of us you see that now all right you see that now so the blood primarily is the doorway to the spirit so what then is the difference between indwelling i'll quickly explain it i'll do another you know teaching on baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of talking in tongues but what's the difference between indwelling of the spirit and what some folks call the infilling of the spirit the indwelling of the spirit is when a man becomes born again the holy spirit he receives the holy spirit in his spirit his spirit becomes alive to god his spirit becomes alive to god so that means he has the fullness of the holy spirit in his spirit what has been affected is his spirit man you know so his mind might be unrenewed his behavior might be unchanged but something has happened in his spirit so baptism of the holy ghost now is what happens is when the holy spirit now takes a hold of that person so he doesn't not just have the holy spirit in his spirit now but the holy spirit is now manifested through his other faculties engulfs his soul his thought pattern engulfs his tongue and then we have the utterance gift of speaking with tongues which is what happened in acts chapter 2 verse 4. all of a sudden after that experience peter was bold enough to start preaching the gospel and immediately the baptism of the holy spirit took place others who were not even there when the disciples got born again in john 2 22 received double of that experience because they were not they now had the holy spirit on the inside of them obviously because they had believed the same things and then they will have the baptism of the holy spirit as well with the evidence of speaking in tongues so basically being born again is equal to receiving the holy ghost so anyone who is born again has received the holy ghost but then the baptism experience is basically being engulfed in the spirit basically and the truth of the matter is the pattern in scripture is that you can have all the experiences all at once you can be born again now you can be filled, you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost because when you are born against the Holy Spirit, remember I said before that is the Spirit that bears witness in your heart. So that means you have the you have to when you believe the gospel, you receive the Spirit. No man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. So it's the Holy Ghost's work ultimately. All right. So the blood is the doorway to the Spirit. Hebrews chapter nine verse twenty two. The Bible there says that and almost all things are by law purged with blood. It says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for without the shedding of blood is no remission. What again is the pattern you find in the Acts of the Apostles? Every time we saw the supply of the Spirit, the blood was preached. The cross was preached. The death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ was preached. Every time we saw the manifestation of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 2 from verse 36, you know, when Peter was preaching the gospel for the first time, he says, Therefore let the whole house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Christ. He says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter, you know, and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Then look at what Peter said to them. He said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent! The Greek word metanoia, which simply means metanoia, which simply means change your mind or change your disposition. Repent. Remember, he told them that this same Jesus Christ, you didn't know him, but this same Jesus Christ, God has made him both Lord and Christ. Now repent and be baptized. To be baptized simply means to be immersed, be converted, to believe. He said, Every one of you, in the name of the Lord, the authority of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And ye shall what? Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift 
of the Holy Ghost. So again, when a man is born again, he has the Spirit. He receives the indwelling of the Spirit because he believes the Gospel. Because he believes the Gospel. Acts chapter 10, I read from verse 38 before how God anointed Jesus Christ the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So Acts 10 is the account of Paul preaching to the Gentile house of Cornelius. So it starts from the incarnate Christ, what Christ did as a man. Then he shifts quickly over. He says, and we are witnesses of these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem and whom they slew and hung on a tree. So he shifts from there to when he was crucified. He says that, and him God raised from the dead on the third day and showed him openly, declaring what happened, that is his death, burial, and resurrection. He says, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead, making reference to Luke 24. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Ah, it says, and then he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that he is which was ordained of God to be judge of quick and dead. To him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission, blotting out, cleansing of sins. What we have in the Old Testament was covering of sins. What we have in the new covenant is cleansing, remission of sins. All right, then look at it now. It says, the Bible then says, And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the glory to God. <laughs> all them which had the word, it says, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, you know, as, as, um, as many that came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. You know, then Peter went on to say, God has no respecter, he's no respecter of persons, and all of that, and all of that, and all of that. So, what we find as a pattern in scriptures is that whenever the gospel is preached, the spirit is supplied. So, if you're listening to me tonight, when you became born again, that was when you received the Holy Spirit. You didn't receive him in a little measure, like some would claim, you received him in his fullness. The problem we have had for many years is that we have disassociated the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues from the salvation experience for too long. For too long. In Acts chapter 8, for example, when Philip preached to the house of, uh, to, the, to this, in the city of Samaria, great joy filled the city, people were born again, people believed the gospel, you know. The Bible then says that when Peter and John heard of what had happened, they came to lay hands on them that they should receive the Holy Ghost. They understood that it was important. And that receiving the Holy Ghost was to be baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Acts 19, you know, um, Paul met a, a couple of guys, Apollos' disciples, asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we have not as heard if there be any Holy Ghost. He says, well, to them, what did you believe? He says, the baptism of John. He says, well, John was preaching about being baptized unto repentance, talking about something greater that was to come. You know, he expanded the gospel to them and the Bible says he laid hands upon them, they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. So you see, the experiences are supposed to come all together. It's supposed to be a full package. Just like it happened in the Gentile house of Cornelius. They didn't confess their sins in the house of Cornelius. They didn't have to beg for it. The Bible says as they heard, they were hearing the words, the gospel of Christ, the death, burial and resurrection of Christ, the remission of sins. The Bible says the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard it. <laughs> I've already moved into baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the message today is that when you became born again, you received the fullness of God's Spirit. You received the fullness of God's Spirit. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Every man that was born again, just the way Jesus Christ promised it. That was the reason why he died. To mass produce himself in every one of us as the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So born again equals indwelling of the Spirit. I trust you have been blessed in this broadcast today. Tune in again next week, same time, on this same platform. Do well to share this video with your friends. I'm sure it has blessed you. Leave a comment in the comment section. Click the like button. Click the bell button to be notified whenever we post a video. You'll be watching Monday Live, New Creation Broadcasting Network. My name is Victor Bolanta, and I approve of this message. This is a blessed week for you. I love you. God bless you.
I give you honor and praise. 